It is sad to boast about a rich past if debt, poverty defines your contemporary reality. I refer to Timbuktu to make the point that if Africa is to gain respect and be accorded its rightful place in the world, we have to shed the cloak of poverty that currently defines us. I refer to Timbuktu to make the point that knowledge production, scholarship and aesthetics tend to flourish when and where there is prosperity. Throughout the world, it has been shown that education provides the fastest route out of poverty. For you, who are our intellectuals, may I dare say that there is no need for us to engage in futile battles along ideological lines. Education provides the equity that we all seek. We have to get our populations educated. We have to get the skills that are required to compete in the modern economy. And we have to gain the self-confidence that comes from being truly independent. This means that you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the writers of the African story, carry a great responsibility. When you write, what you write must have integrity. What is written about Africa by African writers must have the ultimate reference status. We have a responsibility to be brutally frank to and about ourselves. There is nothing to be gained from trying to paint a false picture about ourselves as a way of redressing the centuries of being maligned. When our young people do not see a future in their countries, and cross the Sahara Desert on foot and drown in the Mediterranean Sea in a desperate bid to reach the mirage of a better life in Europe, no amount of beautiful lyrics will change our image. When our economies grow and improve, our young people get educated and are self-confident and full of hope, the world finds its way to our doors and the language and history of our countries become attractive to our own and foreign universities. When the African economies improve and there's increasing prosperity, we will find that more and more people will care about the environment and the, and the arts, and indeed, the sciences will thrive. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, distinguished writers of Africa, tell the African story truthfully and with flair. Give praise where it has been earned and criticism where it is deserved. 